Schwartz spends this season trying to avoid disrespecting his ex-wife by disrespecting Katie in the house. Hey guys, it's me, Takani, and today we are recapping the reunion of Winter House Season 3. We've got enemies with benefits, slow hot tub rejections, and dramatic situationships. So grab your snacks and a cup and let me pour you some tea. Chapter 1, Party, Sleep, and Repeat. The reunion starts with Andy introducing the Winter House cast, as he does with any reunion. A simple, hello, how are you? After introducing the left side, Danielle, Kyle, Amanda, Brian, and Casey, he moves to the right side and introduces Schwartz, and then immediately he throws some shade. He tells Schwartz to cover his ears, and then he introduces Katie. Andy then says hello to Alex, Corey, and Jordan. Bravo shows clips of everyone partying, staying up all night, dancing on counters, spitting in each other's mouths, and licking mustard off of each other's nipples. You know, the usual share house shenanigans. The usual shenanigans? What, you don't lick condiments off your friends? N no, I don't think most people do that. Anyways, Andy asks how much sleep everyone got, because it seems like they were always awake partying, and everyone says four hours, except for Amanda, who says about six to eight hours every night. She understands the importance of sleep, and I can get behind that. Luckily for the house, the Southern Charm gang wasn't there, so the house wasn't nearly as dirty as previous seasons. And also thanks to Malia for waking up early and doing some cleaning sessions. She's from a show called Below Deck where they basically cater to a bunch of yachties, so she's used to waking up early and cleaning. And and sometimes she'd wake up so early that production would just tell her to go back to bed because they don't have anything planned until later in the day when everyone else is awake. Andy asked Schwartz how he felt about filming Winter House a week after Scandival dropped. For those who are out of the Bravoverse loop, let me catch you up. Schwartz and Sandoval, both first named Tom, are longtime cast members of the show Vanderpump Rules. Throughout season 10, Tom Schwartz was navigating his divorce and flirting with Raquel, also known as Rachel, another cast member of Vanderpump Rules. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that believes that Tom Schwartz and Raquel was just a cover-up for Raquel and Tom Sandoval. Anyway, it turns out throughout the season that Tom Sandoval and Raquel were actually having an affair behind his long-term girlfriend Ariana's back. Tom Sandoval and Ariana were together for 10 years, and Raquel was Ariana's best friend. Hey guys, sorry for the jump scare. Um, I'm editing this video right now. I just wanted to include the fact that Ariana supported Tom Sandoval through his worm phase. She put in the work, bro. She supported that man through that mustache, and he's gonna cheat on her? Disgusting. So you can imagine the betrayal she felt. Their affair absolutely blew up on blogs, podcasts, and all other forms of reality TV drama recaps. People were absolutely captivated by the couple's separation, and Ariana skyrocketed to well-deserved fame. She premiered in all kinds of commercials, did Dancing with the Stars, and even hosted Love Island. She's even on Broadway. I'm still a little confused on why it blew up so much. Throughout the first seasons of Vanderpump Rules, Tom Sandoval was caught openly cheating on his girlfriend Kristen, and even admitted it. So this is a pattern for him. I wouldn't be surprised if in that 10 years it wasn't just Raquel and there was more. Allegedly. By me. I allege it. <laughs> Sandoval was supposed to be on Winter House with Tom Schwartz, but I think his PR team told him to stay back. Andy then changes the topic to Amanda's pregnancy scare and Kyle's reaction to the negative test. Amanda says that she was surprised by Kyle's reaction because they never had the I'm ready for a baby talk. And Kyle says that no one is ever really ready for a child, and he wouldn't mind being a dad one day. Schwartz chimes in and says that he also has baby fever. Maybe hold off a little bit, bro. You just got divorced. Andy then brings up Brian's mm, pickup lines where he called Malia Shrek because she has lots of layers, like an onion. Unfortunately, his pickup lines never really worked on Malia or Jordan, but it did work out, allegedly, on a Salt Lake City housewife. They then discuss Casey's love for taxidermy and how she found a raccoon, but her mom made her get rid of it because it was starting to rot. Now that we finished all this room temperature tea, maybe it's time I serve you something a little warmer. Shorts fumbling his shot by disrespecting Katie and yet still somehow reaching the goal? Chapter 2. Schwartz Name Game Drama Listen, her pickings were slim. Kyle was married. Brian was calling Malia an ogre. Danielle and Alex were sleeping together. I mean, she really had no choice. 
And sometimes a woman just needs some lovin', I guess. You see, when Schwartz came to Winterhouse, he was fresh out of his divorce from Katie. He just got done fighting with her over his lack of respect towards her by pursuing someone in the friend group when that was her one rule. I guess Schwartz decided that disrespecting Katie was only worth it for Raquel. He would flirt with Katie, but then he wouldn't stop bringing up the fact that her name was the same name as his ex-wife, and he'd constantly talk about how disrespectful it was to his ex-wife Katie. Everyone in the house wanting to be good friends with Katie and wanting her to get laid, they started referring to her as Floody. And anytime someone called her Katie, he would make a huge deal out of it. Katie was finally over it, and Tom finally called her Katie, and she was hooked on him. Schwartz definitely has a golden retriever energy about him, but I think it's all a front. I've seen every episode of Vanderpump Rules, and to me, Schwartz is kind of manipulative and a terrible person. Allegedly. By me. I allege it. <laughs> As Schwartz tries to play shy, Malia tells them to just pull Floody in for a kiss. And so he does. They hook up in a bathroom and Andy comments about the bra being thrown out of the bathroom door. Floody said that she did that because she didn't want the microphones picking up the, mm, lewd sounds that they were going to make. After the show, they did get together for another night of partying. But they kept it with friends with benefits. At least they ended things amicably. Unlike the next... Couple? Chapter 3. Friends with Benefits Gone Wrong After being rejected by Jordan in the hot tub with an iconically slow and awkward kiss attempt, Alex decides to pursue Danielle. In the middle of Danielle and Alex making out, Danielle says that she just wants to stay friends with benefits and she doesn't want things serious. She just wants to keep it light and fun. And she even encourages Alex to pursue Jordan in the middle of their makeout session. However, Danielle instantly got feelings for this homegrown Tarzan. She tries to hide her jealousy, although not very well if I'm being honest. A few episodes in, she finally tells Alex that he needs to not sleep with anybody in the house, and he needs to be respectful of her. But despite setting that boundary, Alex continues to pursue Jordan throughout the season, even though Jordan really didn't seem that interested after the hot tub incident. Anytime Danielle would catch Alex flirting with Jordan, she would go absolutely ballistic. And then she would take it out on poor Jordan. And one time even Brian. Hi, you know why I'm here. Danielle and Alex kind of got into a little spat. And then Alex told Jordan that Danielle's the worst. And Danielle overheard them. And then poor Brian was just opened up his clothing. And she was just like tossing it everywhere. Poor Brian got caught in the crossfire. Danielle even accused Jordan of being low energy because none of the men in the house are flirting with her. Well, except for Alex, apparently. Alex and Danielle proceed to argue throughout the season, and then they'll hook up, and then they'll argue again. Thank gosh after the season they decided to be friends. I mean, they decided to never speak again. I personally don't think Jordan is in the wrong here. I think Alex was really messy flirting with Jordan constantly and doing it in front of Danielle, and even when they had a house party, he was flirting with other girls in front of Danielle, even after just sleeping with her. So I do think Alex is the problem, but Danielle did say that she wanted to be friends with benefits and nothing serious. And in the second episode, she encouraged Alex to continue pursuing Jordan, even though that they were making out. I think she changed her mind when they had intimate relations for the first time. I really don't understand why Danielle is so mad at Jordan. She just keeps taking it out on her. I feel like she should direct all of her rage towards Alex because he was the one flirting with Jordan. Jordan was just existing as a beautiful woman, and Alex could not resist her, apparently. Dude has no self-control. I understand that she felt disrespected, but again, she needed to bring that up with Alex, not Jordan. What did you think about Danielle telling Alex to talk to you before she made out with him? It felt counterintuitive. If you were interested in him, it was strange to encourage him to pursue me. I didn't give an F. The flirting was so much, it became a respect thing. It wasn't about me having feelings for Alex. We're under the same roof, and it's happening right in front of me. Which was such a slap in the face, by both of you, really. What did we do? The flirting constantly? What, nobody saw that? I interacted the same with Alex that I did with Brian. 
You went into this saying it was 100% a casual thing. I did. Once the disrespect happened, that's not casual to me. It just seems like you're being an asshole. You didn't communicate, I'm still gonna flirt with Jordan every chance I get. I think it was personal with Jordan, because you knew I was interested in her. But I think I flirted with everyone every single day. I don't think I changed course at any point. The problem is, I think you should have. It doesn't register to you that you should have changed a little bit of your behavior. Maybe if it was more casual. If it was a relationship, then change your behavior. But it wasn't. We talked every day about it. Under the same roof? Boy, you are different. Jordan, you knew they were stripping. Did you think you were being disrespectful of Danielle by flirting with him? No. And that surprises you? It disappoints me. Andy asked what Short's thoughts were, and Short says that they were friend with benefits goals in the beginning, in their honeymoon phase, and then things just went south. Andy asked what Amanda's thoughts were, and Amanda says she didn't really notice a lot of the flirting in the house, but after watching it back, Alex was definitely being messy. But they did agree to be friends with benefits, and nothing serious. So the whole thing was just messy in general. Andy asked Danielle if she was worried that Jordan and Alex might hook up, and Danielle insists that she wasn't. But as a woman, Jordan should have backed off even though Alex was the one pursuing her, not the other way around. Jordan points out that she did back off, and I personally believe that the hot tub incident is probably what gave her the ick and made her back off more. Danielle then stands by that she didn't like what she saw, and she didn't like what she saw on the show either, but she values her friendship with Jordan more than she values a relationship with Alex. So Danielle and Jordan are going to work on their relationship. Chapter 4. Vague Intentions and Spit Takes Corey came into the house very much in a situationship with Sam, and whenever anyone asked about their relationship status, Corey was always super vague about it, about how they never had labels, and they're just in a situationship. One day, Corey heard that Casey was talking shit about Sam, and he put a stop to that. He's like, don't talk shit about my girl. When Sam finally did come to the house, Malia was tackling Brian and Corey, and Sam saw Malia tackle Corey, and she was really jealous. She had been reading a bunch of articles saying that Malia and Corey were really vibing, and so she already came in with that in the back of her head, and watching Malia tackle Corey really just confirmed that for her. After Sam argued with Malia about her not respecting their eight-month-long situationship, Corey and Sam go to their room, and they finally make it official. Andy asked Corey what his intentions were coming into the house, and Corey says he didn't want to overstep any boundaries, but he still did want to have fun. They allegedly had agreed that he wouldn't hook up with anybody when he got into the house. I really wish when they asked him to define his relationship, he would have straight up been like, I'm not allowed to hook up with anybody, but I'm allowed to flirt. Andy asks Sam if she has any thoughts from watching the show, and she says she has quite a few. Sam brings up that Malia said that she and Corey were like platonic siblings who spit in each other's mouths and flirt a little bit. And also, Malia said that Corey looked like he would be a really great kisser. Kind of gross thing to say about someone you consider a sibling, but okay. Sam, you think everyone wants Corey, and it's laughable. You would have definitely slept with me if I gave you the opportunity. Corey, I wouldn't have slept with you on Winter House. That's not true at all. You're just mad a guy you called a three rejected you. That's why you called him a three. No, I'm not. Corey's not my type. I watched the show and heard from Corey. And the first thing Daniel said was Malia was all over him. Sam says when she first got to the house, Danielle pulled her aside and said Malia had been all over Corey. Malia speaks up and tells Sam that she wasn't the only one. And Sam says, that brings me to my next point. And then she gets upset at Jordan for knocking on Corey's door in the middle of the night. Jordan says that she didn't know her and Corey were together. And Malia says that she didn't know that either. And neither of them knew Sam. And Sam's like, well, I didn't know you until I saw the blogs about you vibing with Corey. Katie reminds Sam that Corey was the one being vague. And Andy asks if Corey gets any of the blame. Sam says he gets it all the time. And it's really affected their relationship. Does Corey get any of the blame? All the time. Thank you. No, not thank you, Malia. You don't know our relationship, and you keep insisting it. It's not just me, Sam. You're yelling at just me. You came in super insecure about your relationship status, and instead of talking to me or any other woman in the house, you gunned for me. You were disrespecting me in front of my face. Corey was disrespecting you. When I came into the house, Corey said, I told those girls we were dating, and they're still coming for me. That's the information I got. I did say we were dating. After a little bit of arguing, Corey admits that he was trying to have his cake and eat it too. Which, what else do you do with cake? Of course you're supposed to eat it.
I guess it's because, like, you can't have it if it's eaten, right? That's, like, the whole point of the phrase, but, like, you're still having it by eating it. But, okay. Corey admits that he took it too far with this fitting thing. And Sam says that it just felt personal because she did that with Corey on Summer House. Malia insists that she didn't watch Summer House. And Sam starts crying, talking about how it really damaged their relationship and she felt so disrespected. They talk more about the spit kiss thing. And Andy asks Jordan to explain the second one that she witnessed. Jordan says it's just like the one that they filmed, but it was in the bathroom. They were all drunk and it really wasn't that big of a deal. She was just in her feelings. Corey chimes in that it's not a sex thing. And Sam asks, well, why did Jordan start crying then? Of course Jordan had a thing for Corey too. And Malia being flirty after Jordan was vulnerable with her and being encouraged to pursue Corey, she felt set up, so her feelings were hurt. Guess who's back? So I don't think I was very clear about this. Basically, Malia had encouraged Jordan to go for Corey. And then after doing that, Malia spit in Corey's mouth. That was why Jordan was kind of upset about it. Jordan says that she was also struggling with having a show that hadn't aired yet and being the only black woman in the house and she was struggling with being in Colorado for the first time too. Everything was just overwhelming so it was really just the straw that broke the camel's back and made her cry. Sam then claims that Malia is two-faced and Katie sticks up for her and says that Malia is the girl's girl through and through. Kyle then reminds Sam that the ladies didn't know that Sam was in a relationship because Corey kept being vague so she should try to give Malia and Jordan the benefit of the doubt and benefit a doubt. Benefit, doubt, doubt, benefit, de benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, benefit of doubt, benefit of doubt. Schwartz tries to bring up his boy Corey by talking about when Casey disrespected Sam and called her trash, that he stuck up for Sam and put a stop to it immediately. Casey also brings up how she was on the show and she apologizes for gossiping about Sam despite not knowing her. She says she was trying to bring herself up by bringing Sam down and that it wasn't right. Andy asked Corey if Casey didn't call Sam trash, if he would have called Sam his girl at any time and kind of defined the relationship. Corey says that he's a rebel and he doesn't like labels that are being pushed onto him. He wanted to do things on his own terms. Sam rightfully says that she's more important than that and she's not just a tool for him to rebel. Sam also acknowledges that Corey wasn't treating her right and demands better. After that, Malia says that after she met Sam, she wanted to help her and Corey's relationship, not ruin it. Andy he asks Sam if she buys that, which kind of implies that he also doesn't believe it, right? Or am I just reading too much into it? As Sam replies, she starts crying. She's saying that it's been really hard on their relationship. She has an investment in Corey, and she felt like nobody was respecting that. Amanda then says, well, at least you didn't have to watch him making out with girls, reminding us that Kyle had cheated on her in front of the cameras. Andy says that the whole situation could have helped them put a label on it, and if it wasn't for that, they wouldn't be dating. Sam agrees, but she wishes it actually felt like a win, because forgiving him is a choice that she has to make every single day. Malia apologizes and sends a virtual hug to Sam. And that's everything that happened in the reunion of Winter House Season 3. What T had you captivated the most? Short's cringy attempts to respect his ex-wife by disrespecting Katie? The roller coaster of Daniel and Alex friends with benefits situation? Or Sam coming in and immediately attacking Malia? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like or dislike the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!